Hey, what's going on? It's Coach Johnny B. This is the Performance Plus Podcast. Today, I am joined by Pamela Gagnon to figure out why you and I can't handstand walk very well. Pamela, before we jump in, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it is winter break, so got some great time with my college kiddo. And um, yeah, we, uh, we're going on a ski trip, so that'll be fun. And just helping some athletes get ready for the upcoming season. And that is why I thought we should definitely talk about why you, meaning anyone, cannot handstand walk if they want to. <laughs> There's a glaring problem in our community. What is it? They do not have a handstand foundation. Oh, so I was afraid you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. So I find it really interesting that athletes are willing to like train like three position snatches and the, you know, um, overhead squats to make your snatch better. And, you know, um, we'll sit there and do drills and Bergner warm up. But when it comes to gymnastics, they just go from A to Z without doing anything in between and knowing that there's all the letters of the alphabet that need to be mastered before you get to the end. Um, so it's like saying, like, it's like teaching a kid to read sentences before they can even sound out letters. Um, that's what, like, why you're probably banging your head against the wall and only doing the exact same thing year after year. So if you stick to building strength, stability, and foundation, and the foundation is spatial and body awareness, it is shoulder stability and strength, it is being inverted every single day but in more of a like progressive progressional way so um in order to know how to manage walking forward backward side or side you know side side you have to understand where your body is in space so you need to be able to stack your hips over your shoulders and your shoulders over your wrists and um, how are your fingers and palms moving so you can equally balance as you press through the floor and create tension? So um, our Performance Plus like handstand programs are built based on the foundation. So handstand walking is really towards the end of all of that that final goal because handstand strength and stability is really the first portion of it. And that is getting inverted all the time and building the strength and stability in your shoulders. Um, so once you learn that and you get comfortable with shifting weight in a handstand hold on the wall, then we move to handstand balancing and building that um, you know capacity to be able to understand where we are in space if there's no wall behind us. Also, you have to like trust yourself right? We're like, most of us are adults, like throwing ourselves through the air. So a lot of the reason handstand walking is difficult is because you don't know how to, you know, trust your intuition if you're falling backward, or like, how to save yourself without getting hurt and splatting straight on the floor. So that's why having that foundation is so important. Um, how so the thing that I was finding is it beyond that like having the balance having the proper reception having all those things like just getting into the position right like so many people kick wildly into a handstand and wonder why they have no chance at like actually pulling into a position that they control uh the programs address that as well correct yes. i mean there's lots of drills where you're kicking and you know barely touching the wall pulling foot back off uh and i think that is one thing that i've noticed at least with the people that I work with that they have no control over just the start of the movement, let alone being able to get there. Um, that's so that important. is such a good, good point. If you watch handstand balancers like on Instagram and you watch them kick up or gymnasts, they are already under control before their, you know, last foot leaves the ground. They're already finding that balance and it takes flexibility and it definitely takes um, a lot of drills and practice. And yes, that is a huge part of the foundational work 
is learning to kick up under control. Do you think uh, it's realistic that if you hit handstand, um, uh, balance breakthrough and strength and stability in the right order, uh, that mm -hmm. you can actually within that 12 weeks, see a measurable prog progression towards walking on your hands? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you really have no experience being upside down, then it, you might um, have to go through like that pressing mechanics, um, gymnastics program as well, too, to just add a little bit more of the foundation. That's like a, a real, you know, that's like the, the first level. Um, but absolutely, it will be like a light bulb went off like wow and a lot of it is just practice because practice builds muscle memory and muscle memory builds strength and strength and muscle memory build you know spatial and body awareness so yeah uh do you see that people's there's actually a physical like weakness in the shoulders where people are actually too weak to get into <clears throat> position or is it more of a proprioception issue um, yes, yeah, so it can definitely be both. So um, athletes who have weak shoulders, that's why we do strength and stability yeah. first, um, will have a much harder time getting into a staple handstand, but also the flexibility of your range of shoulder um, is huge too. So the tighter your shoulders are, the um, more compromised your positioning has to be. And so our overhead mobility program over overhead mobility overhaul is one of the programs i recommend for everybody who has tight shoulders who want to do yeah. good handstand work i'm going to add on to that just uh, there zach has some uh they're called shoulder flexion assessments on his instagram uh if you go do that assessment and you compensate uh you're probably not ready to start tackling handstands yet like you should definitely work the mobility program and then uh then get into the handstands uh it, I think you talked about being able to stack your wrist, shoulders, and feet in a line. And if your shoulders can't get in the position, then there's just not going to happen uh, or not very happen very easily. You'll set yourself up for an injury. So um, make sure you're uh, make sure you're assessing yourself and being realistic with it too uh, before uh, just jumping into anything. Uh, after so, let's say I, you knock out the first two programs and you're ready. Uh, what's the benchmark to be ready to start taking on the handstand walking program? Uh, definitely a freestanding handstand where you're comfortable away from the wall. You know, you don't have to hold it for 20 seconds, but you have to at least be able to hold it for a solid five to seven to, well, I mean, five to 10 seconds, you know, and, and understand how to save, like if you're leaning, um, overarching how to use your fingers and palms to press through the ground and open your shoulders back up or bring the rib back down. So, you know, you are up able to once you start adding momentum really um control where you're you're going uh feet pointed or not so great question um i always train to the best possible position and when our feet are pointed and our body is stacked we have the most tension and so it's like um it's much easier to move your body through space when you are tense versus when you are have no tension. Um, it's like a slinky versus a rubber band, which will go further, you know. Um, but, you know, I also train that because if you want to eventually learn freestanding handstand push-ups or handstand push-ups on the rings, you can't be in this crazy overarch and you have to be tight. So training great position in the beginning of the foundational work will translate um you know if you want to get those, those advanced movements and as a coach it's not my job to say you will never be able to do that it's my job to give you the foundation that if you eventually want to get there you can how much does uh midline work play in it as well like as far as like being able to have control and awareness over like hollow arch position and being able to uh even like control that piece, right? Because you feel like some people like just don't even have awareness of that. Do you think the handstand program fixes that as well? Or if like a core strength program might be something to add in as well in your training? 
Yeah, definitely um, works on that. There's a few drills I um, have in all the programs that will work on that. But I really like our gymnasty abs for that. Um, I think there's a lot of strength, core strength work where you go from arch to hollow, and that helps a lot as well too. Um, and it's it's think of it like trying to like push press with a huge arch or like zero tension in your core versus if you lock in and push press with a much more solid base it's just easier. The barbell feels lighter. And so that's you upside down. Wow. That is not me upside. Well, me upside <laughs> down is that guy with the over arch we'll guy. There. We'll get what, there. All right. So I, I'm sure there's going to be people, but that say, what, what about the CrossFit games? Those people look like scorpions. Is that a mm -hmm. trained position? Is it necessary? Or can you still look beautiful and like you do and, and move fast? Yeah. So those athletes have a foundation um, they're under fatigue. When I walk fast, I do bend my knees, but I don't arch my back. I um, keep it in line because I find that I just have a much more stable, strong base when I do that. Um, but what you don't see is that they don't need to do that. And they're doing that under fatigue and they're doing, you know, whatever they can to basically win that day. Um, I'd actually probably go back and fix some of them <laughs> because I'd be like, Hey, you know, you can kick your feet and you can move through space like that. But if you stabilize your spine and stack your spine, you'll actually probably generate more power and control. So, um, you know, I had this athlete once <laughs> who was like, oh my God, I want to learn to handstand walk, but I just can't do that scorpion thing. So I'll never be able to walk. And I was like, oh my, I mean, my stomach turned. I was like, wait, what? You actually think the scorpion is like how you handstand walk? And I was like, whoa, it's just because it makes a really cool picture, right? Everybody loves that. It's so cool. And handstands, if you look at a gymnast, they do crazy archy handstands. And if you look at acrobatic athletes, um, you know, circus athletes so, who are handstand balancers, it, but they have the flexibility in their spine to do that. They have thoracic mobility and they've been practicing that. So when they're done, they don't have all this like pain in their lower back because they train very different than how we train. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because they have total control globally over the entire position of the spine, right? Like every single little paraspinal muscle from the, you know, the sacrum all the way up to the neck, they can feel that they can control it. They, they're intentionally arching they're intentionally bowing, uh, for a look and for a position, especially if you're talking about like artistic gymnastics, right? Like, um, you know, it's not when you see people do it in the CrossFit setting, they have like a flexion point right between their thoracic spine and their, their lower back. And that's not good. Lumbar, you you yeah. don't want to hang out that way. And that's, I think people actually get, uh, injured if I'm not mistaken, um, from that, like a, in CrossFit settings, just from doing like a pulling exercise coupled with a handstand push up, like there's just a lot of flexion extension at a joint a lot of times and they'll get, uh, produce injury. So, uh, that's an excellent point. Like the glow, there's nothing wrong with global extension. It's just, is it at one point, right? What, you know, it, it, instead of like, being uh over over the entire spine like you said yeah, so, there's yeah. there's no right angles in a gymnast right like everything looks like right. it's a continuous line it's just a different shape uh, yep. but when you see me do a handstand walk I, I look like a stick figure that's drawn in you know terrible angles it's awful yeah um we'll fix it, Johnny. well I, you know i i will speak to the uh the handstand um uh, strength and stability overhaul. I did that a long time ago when I was coaching CrossFit almost full time. Um, and in the gym all the time, I just ran it, uh, and it worked fantastically. And I actually got to the point where, um, two opens ago can handstand walk, no problem. And then have since, you know, life's gotten in the way and that skill goes away. Like that is truly, uh, one of yeah. those skills where if you don't practice it regularly, uh, it's harder and harder and harder to find that balance point stick in it. But I will speak that it really, really works. And if I want to fix myself, I'll just, you know, go back and do it again. And, and then, uh, when it doesn't work, send you videos and ask why is this not working? Why, why did nice. this not work? Yeah. The program is literally like 10 to 15 minutes a day. And, you know, you can fit that in 
you know, into your garage it, workout or whatever. You and know. it's fun, man. Like I got, it's, it's a really fun thing to get inverted. It's really fun thing to do handstand shift and lifts and walk over plates and practice, uh, the balance and pulling your feet off the wall. Like that, yeah. it, it, you feel, uh, it gives you that badass feeling after you're done yeah. with it. And that's a really, like, I think it's a great way to end a session. You walk out the door feeling really good on top of getting closer to that skill. I want to add Imagine one. walking out the door on your I hands. Know, I know. <laughs> That was like a goal for me. The gym, you've been at our gym before, uh, yeah. has a super long track. And like, I always had this fantasy that I was just going to kick up and walk. It's like 112 feet, just walk the 112 feet out of the gym, like, uh, and like high five somebody with, and I tried it and would make it, you know, 50 to 75 feet and just not have the stability. But yeah, that's a, that's a good right. fantasy. Just handstand walk out of the gym, uh, high five everybody with your feet. Uh, I want to add one other thing in this because I think there's a lot of people out there that will, would have this experience. There's kind of this feeling if you've never done gymnastics before that you're not progressing when you're doing it. Sometimes like if you, uh, you finish the second week of the program and then you start toying around with a handstand in the middle of the room, a lot of times it doesn't feel like you've made any progress, but it's really strange how you get to the end of it. And then there's this just almost like aha moment where you're like, whoa, okay. Like I have acquired a skill. Like I feel very, very comfortable, uh, pulling my feet off the wall and doing a handstand near the wall. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not like weightlifting where you can see your muscle tissue get bigger. It's weird. It's a hard, uh, hard feeling to have from within, but it does really work. So. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Uh, so uh, big takeaway there. If you don't have a freestanding handstand, you need to do this. Let's fix it, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you can't stand walk because you don't have the right. foundation. So get going. Start working. That, that's a common theme for us. And yeah. I love it. Like if you don't master the foundations, you can't build a house on it. So uh, yeah. good stuff. Anything uh, you going doing anything this weekend? You're not you're not a Christmas. You're you're Jewish. So you're not celebrating Christmas, correct? We, yeah. yes, we don't celebrate Christmas, but I have lots of friends that do. And so I'm going to go visit some friends and wear a Mrs. Claus hat um, uh -huh. and ring their doorbell. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> My friend has two little kids and I'm like, I'm totally doing this. <laughs> That's so fun. That's so cool. They're going to be so stoked. Are you going to handstand walk up to their door wearing a Mrs. Claus hat? Uh, actually, their her younger daughter does do gymnastics. So that would be super cool. But the hat yeah, wouldn't stay yeah. on. Just Bobby pin it on <laughs> something. Well, you have an amazing Christmas. I will. And Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you uh, it's going to be a good time. So I can't wait. I'm ready for a few days off of work. That's for sure. So. Nice. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, tuning in. Um, again, all the uh, programs are linked down in the bio. And there's also our goals page on our website, uh, which will show you the progression that you need to get to Handstand Walk if you're uh, not there. So check both those resources out. Make sure you follow uh, Pamela Genon on Instagram. Um, she posts all of this stuff and more. Uh, it's the best follow on the Internet if you're not doing it. So make sure you do it. Um, have a, a happy holidays and we will uh, talk to you guys in the new year.